about 10 minutes, we'll get started. Oh, there it is. Hey, all right. So in about 10 minutes, uh, we're going to get started here. So if everyone could please start finding their seats so we can get started on time. Thank you.
funny how that happens. Yeah. I'm, I'm everywhere. I'm everywhere. We got about uh, one minute left, folks. So if uh, there are some empty seats, staff, please feel free to grab any one of those. Not quite yet. And thank you guys so much for joining us here today for this monumental, this historic day in Seattle Kraken history. We're taking another big step in the process uh, toward our inaugural season, which will commence this October. I want to welcome all the media members who are here today, both in person as well as on Zoom. And I also want to take a chance to uh, thank all of our fans, both Kraken fans, hockey fans, all around the hockey world for tuning in to today's festivities. To kick this off, I'd like to welcome Kraken CEO, Todd Lewicki. Softy, do we need to take a 30 second break here to get a commercial in? Five minutes, very good. Welcome everyone. And on behalf of David Bonderman, our owners, uh, welcome to what is a historic press conference. Uh, a long time coming, a lot of work to get to this point. We have just been on an incredible journey, um, an episodic uh, journey that took us from the improbable to the probable. And uh, I want to call out my brother Tim right back here. Uh, and without his vision and Francesca Bodie's guile, I wouldn't be here and none of us would be here. So I say that with some emotion in my voice, but uh, I'm so happy my brother came up today. And Francesca, where are you, dear? Thank you for being here. So Tim started all this, and what he started was really an amazing journey uh, and the unleashing of unprecedented passion by fans. We celebrate March 1st every year as a company holiday in honor of 32,000 depositors getting behind this team in 2018. And let us never forget, it was those fans who really gave life to this dream. But after that, that really did become the wind in the sails. And from there, we're just about finished building what I believe will be the most beautiful arena in the whole world. Um, and from there, uh, we sometimes call it Junior Varsity, our training center project just about six miles north of the arena, right up the road, we think best in class. And again, an incredible commitment by our owners. Uh, Dave Wright is here, he's our vice chair. Um, the Ackerley family, uh, they got behind us and they believed in this dream. Um, a GM, uh, but others. Uh, we have staff here, Victor DeBonis, my partner, who's our chief operating officer. Um, but as we kept dreaming, the dream kept getting better and bigger. So when it came time to GM, we kept dreaming big. So this guy's going to come up next. He played in 1,700, over 1,700 NHL games. He's number two in the history of the NHL in assist. He captained four teams, member of the Hockey Hall of Fame in 2007. He won the cup twice, and he led the search. Ron is many things, but for sure. He's diligent, he's detailed, he's thoughtful, and he's thorough. And that's what this search was. And it was a beautiful thing to witness. And I am so proud of where we came out. And I am so excited for the future. Ron Francis.
Thank you. Um, it's been a crazy past year and a half, so I'm actually really excited to be in a room full of people. So I really appreciate everybody taking the time to be here today and, and be a part of this. Um, you know, it's an exciting day for the Seattle Kraken franchise. We're going to announce today our first ever franchise head coach. Um, I think anytime there's a head coaching position open, there's a lot of interest, but I'd like to think that this one maybe generated a little bit more than normal. And some of that has to do on some of the things Todd talked about. I think it starts at the top. You know, our ownership group has been fantastic. As he mentioned, some are here today. Uh, that group's led by Mr. David Bonderman. And, you know, we have a directive not only to build a good hockey team, but to also be active and a part of our community. And I think that has led Todd to coming up with some really cool initiatives and doing some really different things that uh, maybe aren't done around the National Hockey League and things that we're proud of as an organization to be uh, active in the community. So I think that adds interest from the outside. You look at the facilities we're, we're building, the Climate Pledge Arena and our practice facility are going to be two absolutely state-of-the-art facilities that are going to allow our players you know, to reach peak performance, which is what every player wants to do. Right? They want to have that opportunity. And then we haven't played a game yet, but the word is already out that we've got some you know, crazy passionate fans and uh, we can't wait to start playing hockey in front of them. So there's a lot of interesting things that go into the head coaching position and, and the opportunity. There's also been some unique challenges, right? With COVID this past year, it hasn't been a normal year. Uh, it's been a little more challenging for us to work and scout and the season has actually been pushed back. So we select our team on July 21st, roughly two months after that, we're gonna roll right into training camp and followed by the season. So when we're looking for a head coach, there's certain things we wanted. We wanted somebody that had experience, uh, sort of been a head coach in, in the NHL before. There's so many things going, learning the players, learning the teams, learning systems, and, and quite frankly, the pace of the NHL is unlike anything else. So you wanted somebody who's been through that and experienced that. Um, we wanted somebody that had good hockey acumen, that understood systems and, and how to play in all three different zones. And if we had to tweak things, we could do that along the way. We wanted somebody who could communicate that message uh, very clearly and very concisely to our players. And uh, you know, the last thing is we wanted to find an individual who we genuinely felt cared about the players and wanted them to reach their potential. And uh, when we went through the interview process, the guy that we're hiring checked all of those boxes continually. So um, without further ado, I would like to introduce the first ever head coach of the Seattle Kraken, Dave Hackstone. We're gonna watch a video first before he talks. <laughs> Dreams do come true, not only for a town and a team, but for a coach. A coach who works the hardest and deserves success. Once heralded as one of the best in college hockey, he sent countless stars to the NHL. As a coach at the junior level, he comprised a winning record. As a college coach, he comprised a winning record. And as a head coach in the NHL, he comprised a winning record before an unsatisfying ending. But now, a new beginning. A new beginning in what will become one of America's great hockey towns with a fan base second to none. A state-of-the-art arena and training center with a Hall of Famer as your GM. What's not to like? After a year of searching and considering, meet the right coach for the Kraken, Dave Haxtall. The Drayton Valley Alberta native was captain at the University of North Dakota before returning to his alma mater to take the helm as coach. In all 11 seasons as head coach, UND appeared in the NCAA Championship Tournament, two-time Conference Coach of the Year, eight-time finalist for National Coach of the Year, seven players named Hobie Baker Award finalists, 11 players named All-American, in 2015, he became the first head coach since 1982 to jump from the collegiate level straight to the National Hockey League. As head coach, he led the Philadelphia Flyers to the Stanley Cup playoffs in two of his three seasons. In 2019, he joined the coaching staff of the Toronto Maple Leafs, focused on defense. He's known as a student of the game, a great communicator, and a coach who cares about his players. Dave, to you and your family, welcome to Seattle. To our fans, a big piece of the puzzle comes together. Next up, the expansion draft.
Wow, that's, uh, that's quite an awesome uh, introduction. Um, and, uh, and I can say, uh, you know, this, this is a dream that uh, has come true. This is a, an awesome uh, thing to be uh, a part of and to have the opportunity uh, to join these two gentlemen up here today, uh, not only here at the press conference, uh, but as we uh, take, the un take on the undertaking of uh, building uh, a hockey team uh, from the ground up is really exciting. I couldn't be more proud to, uh, to have the opportunity uh, to be up here with, with Todd and Ron today. Um, in regards to our ownership group, uh, with Mr. David Bonderman and the entire ownership group, the vision that they have had and the execution of that vision and putting the foundation in place uh, for this franchise, I'm quickly learning is absolutely special and spectacular. Uh, I'm going to keep my comments here at the podium quite short. Uh, one of the, uh, the first opportunities that I had to come to the city of Seattle is some uh, probably nearly 25 years ago. I was uh, a young coach in the USHL at the time. And uh, with the USHL and the way the feeder system worked, we had what we called a protected team here in Seattle. Uh, it, was, uh, it was the uh, Seattle Snow King. So I had an opportunity to come to town uh, to evaluate and get to know some of the young men uh, on that team. And as I said, that was some 25 or 26 years ago. I had the opportunity to, uh, to text with uh, one of the young guys that actually came to play for us in Sioux City earlier this morning. I'm sure he had no idea why he was getting a random text from me uh, this morning, uh, but he's, uh, he's a tremendous young man uh, and, and a product of, uh, of the Seattle hockey community. And that was one of my first opportunities uh, to experience the hockey community here in Seattle. So for me now uh, to be able to come back here 25 years later, uh, in, uh, in a bit of a different role, um, but uh, certainly an exciting role. And to be able to have my wife, uh, Aaron, who is here in the front row, my son, Brendan, who is here, and uh, our daughter, unfair, unfortunately, Avery, uh, 15 years old, is at home with friends. She, she had bigger and better things. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, but I couldn't go without uh, saying hello to her as well. We are absolutely thrilled to be able to join the hockey community here in Seattle. Uh, we're grateful for the opportunity to become part of the Kraken organization, and uh, we certainly look forward to becoming uh, a part of the community here in the city of Seattle. Thank you. of the media might have and uh, we'll open the floor uh, to those questions if you guys could also please uh, just raise your hand we've got wireless mics on either side so raise your hand we'll have uh, Diera and Ben hand over the microphones we'll get through our in-person questions first and then those of you on zoom will go down that zoom list as well so Ryan Clark Ron Day for starters thank you for your time second let's start here for you Ron what were some of the things you looked at when it came to, to Dave? I know there's what you talked about, but what are some of those extra things? And for you, Dave, what maybe makes this different given that the last time you were in this situation, you had been in college as if now you know the NHL a lot better and, and all the demands that come with it? Yeah, so I mean, I talked about some of the things we we're certainly looking for. Um, you know, one thing people may not know is uh, in 2019 uh, with Hockey Canada, I was part of the management team and Dave was part of the coaching staff. So we got to spend four weeks together over in, in Austria and, and Slovakia. And, uh, you know, I got to know him as a person and, and kind of watch his work ethic and, and how he operated and sort of sort of building sort of that respect for what he can do. And as we went through the process, he was certainly a guy that I had interest in talking to. And, and uh, we talked to him the first time last summer and then a couple of times since. And uh, just was very impressed in, in all the discussions we had as to the points we talked about. I think he's he's got the experience. It was a little bit, uh, you know, maybe a, a big jump, you know, from college the first time. But now he's been in the league for six years. He's worked under some some different coaches and uh, gained a lot more experience. So we're comfortable in that regard. And 
Um, I've always been comfortable with this hockey acumen, and, and uh, you know, I like the way he communicates his message, and, and I know he cares about his players. So uh, all those things made it the, the right choice for our first hire as head coach in the Seattle Kraken organization. Uh, you know, Ryan, experience is valuable. And, you know, the first time around uh, that I had the opportunity to, uh, to be in this spot, I uh, had a great deal of experience, um, you know, working with real good players, working with uh, very dedicated, motivated players, uh, working with great coaches. But I hadn't had the experience uh, of working at the National Hockey League level. There's a different rhythm to the National Hockey League um, in, in almost every realm. Uh, from the 82-game schedule to the pace of, uh, you know, of, of the daily, uh, daily business uh, to on ice and, and the pace of the game. So uh, experience is very valuable. There are a lot of things that, uh, that you know, I, I solidified and were really cemented in terms of my philosophies. Uh, there are other things that, uh, that, you know, where you grow, you learn, and you develop. And, and all of those experiences... Uh, not just over the last six years, all of my experience are, are you know are very valuable in terms of um, you know how I apply those going forward, uh, especially with the opportunity uh, here uh, to to work with Ron uh, and and to work with the Kraken. Well, of Chris uh, next, and if you could please also just state your affiliation when you uh, have the microphone as well, please. Thanks, Everett. Uh, Chris Francis from Cairo Seven here in Seattle. Um, Dave, for you, uh, the excitement of building a team from scratch, uh, working with Ron and his team, uh, but also the challenge of that. Can you talk to that a little bit? And for Ron, what does he bring in terms of doing that, especially that he's worked with such a young team in Toronto and in the college game where he knows a lot of young players? Really, you know, I view it as a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity you know, in order to, to be part of something uh, that uh, you know that we have an opportunity to build from the ground up. Uh, detail uh, and communication is going to be very, very important. Uh, not only you know over the the phase uh, over the next few weeks of uh, of building the roster, but from there, it's planning on how everything fits together. It's planning for training camp. It's preparation uh, for the detail of not just day to day, but you know, the, the minute to minute, hour to hour details that are, that are needed in training camp to bring uh, a group of guys together that haven't played together before. Uh, so it's, it's a very exciting challenge. It's a very exciting opportunity. Yeah, and I, I think if you, you know, you go back and look at Dave's resume, um, <clears throat> starting with the USHL, sort of came in halfway through the year in a tough situation, turned that around the next three years. Um, went to North Dakota as an assistant coach and then associate coach and then took the reins and it was a successful program, but he added his own touches to it. And 11 years there as a head coach, nine of those years, I think he had a winning percentage over 600. And the other two, he had a winning percentage over 700. And that's in, a, in an environment where you're changing your team on a yearly basis. And, and definitely every four years, those guys graduate and move on. So um, that bodes well for, for sort of the, the building and the base and be able to communicate. And then you come into the NHL and you gain that experience. And as you mentioned, you know, he's worked the last couple of years in Toronto with a very young team and, and been a big part of you know, their sort of growth and progression um, towards having more and more success. So uh, we think that all bodes well for him in, in this situation for us. All right in the second row. Hey, guys. Hello. Hey, guys. Tim Booth with the AP. Um, Ron, you said that you first talked with Dave back in last summer. Was that sort of just informal? Um, conversations or was that kind of the first step of this interview process with him and then for Dave do you have a you're gonna have some say on what this this first team looks like when the expansion draft comes up do you have a preference versus if it's a young team that sort of builds and kind of fits with your experience in college and in Toronto or would you rather have a more veteran team that might have a better chance of being successful uh, earlier on uh, the first guy sure <laughs> well I'm gonna be I'm gonna be part of you know, uh, you know, part of all of the conversations. And um, in terms of a preference, you know, it, it's really about, you know, building with good quality people to begin with, um, building it the right way, um, making sure that, you know, we're, we're building uh, not only a team uh, that can come out of the gate and play with a lot of pride, passion, and have success, but also work towards building the depth of the organization for not only that early success, but to have that sustainable success. Uh, and those are the, you know, those are the conversations that, that I'll be part of. 
Um, you know, there's, uh, you know, there's, a, um, there's obviously roles. Uh, my role as a coach, and I'm going to be excited uh, to coach the roster uh, that comes into training camp this fall. And we, you know, you start the process, you put together a, a long list of names that you think are potential candidates. And um, we did start doing some interviews uh, last summer. Um, so, and Dave was part of that process that we interviewed last summer. And, and then we had uh, more interviews with him as we moved along throughout the process to finally making our decision. Jeff? Hi, guys. Jeff Baker from the Seattle Times. Uh, for Dave, t Toronto's a very analytics-minded organization. And, and I'm wondering how much of that uh, trickled down to you and how, how involved you were in the analytics, in working with the analytics team over there. And, and for Ron, uh, just how much of an importance was that in considering Dave for the hiring, the fact that he's worked in an analytics-minded uh, organization? Uh, you know, two, I'm trying to answer with two parts here. There's, there's two pieces to it. Uh, analytics is a phenomenal tool. It's a phenomenal tool for us as coaches to uh, to evaluate, uh, to discover, uh, you know, and, and to find different avenues to improve our team. The second piece of that is this is still a very human game, 100%. On the ice, it's played with emotion and passion. Um, there's all kinds of pace to it. Uh, so the combination of the two, uh, you know, are, are valuable together. I had a great chance to work with, with great people uh, in Toronto on the analytics side and, and also in Philadelphia on the analytics side. So I think it's a very important tool uh, and, and one that, uh, you know, will be part of, uh, you know, of how we grow and evaluate uh, our hockey team. And again, I'm going to end with just never forget, this is a game that's played on emotion and it's, and it's a human game. And yeah, Jeff, I, you know, when I was actually uh, being interviewed for, for my position, that was something that came up with the ownership group. They uh, we're interested in that, thought that we should make that a part of uh, our process as, as we build out our team. And I think we're very fortunate. We, you know, we have Alexander Mandricki and her team that do an excellent job for us in that regard. So certainly when we were asking the questions on, on the coaches, um, there were questions surrounding analytics, and we did that with everybody. It wasn't the only question, but it was certainly part of the process to, uh, to sort of make our final decision for sure. Right next to Jeff, yep. Uh, Larry Stone, Seattle Times. Dave, I'm kind of interested in your, your journey as a coach. Even when you were playing, was coaching something that you aspired to do? And uh, you know, how did you get into that? I have to be honest, it's something that I had thought about, but it, wasn't, it was never something that was, uh, uh, that was a clear-minded goal of mine. Uh, I came out of a, um, you know, a minor league playing career, and uh, there was an opportunity uh, that was pro provided to me uh, you know, a little bit unexpected uh, at a strange time of the year by a former coach of mine, Gino Gasparini. He was the, uh, he was the uh, commissioner at the time of the USHL. It was not part of my plans for that immediate time of my life, uh, but the opportunity arose. Uh, and, uh, you know, as I look back on it, what an unbelievable opportunity it was to go to Sioux City and work with great people there. Um, everywhere you go and every step of the way, uh, for me personally, I think for most people involved in the game, there are people that become very important in your, in your development, not only professionally as a coach, but also uh, life-wise. And I had that opportunity uh, immediately in Sioux City and every step of the, long, every step of the way along from, from that point forward. Andy, yeah. Hi, Andy Eid from soundofhockey.com. Uh, Dave. A uh, question, you've been a head coach for a long time, even in the NHL, and then you spent a couple of years now as an assistant in the NHL. Did that provide a different or a unique view of the job as being an assistant? And is there anything that you learned from that that, that you can now add to your previous experience? It, it definitely brings a different perspective. Uh, you, you know, it's a different, uh, it's a different uh, routine and rhythm uh, within your, you know, your, uh, your daily organization. Uh, no question about that, but it's also a, it's a little different perspective with the players, um, and you know I don't want to make too much of that. I think everybody has their own approach, whether you're a head coach or an assistant coach with the players. But it definitely provides a little bit of a different perspective. It was a great learning opportunity. Uh, I had an opportunity to work with two outstanding coaches, with with both Mike and Sheldon. Uh, in Toronto as well as the other assistant coaches that were there and, and the people surrounding. So, you know, you, you take a piece from, you know, from every uh, experience that you go through and 
uh, everybody that you have an opportunity to work with, whether it was, like I said, with Mike and Sheldon uh, as, as an assistant coach to them or uh, some of the assistant coaches that I've had the, uh, the great opportunity to work with. You learn a little bit, um, and, I, you know, that's, that's I, I believe we're all pretty motivated to keep pushing the envelope and find better ways to do things um, and, and uh, you know, become better uh, in the way, you know, we can help our players be at their very best. And at the end of the day, that's our job. Help our players, help our team be at the very best uh, and, and help them succeed. We're going to open up our Zoom room in a second, but are there any other final in-person questions? Dave, how would you, how would you, how would you describe the, the Philadelphia experience from your standpoint and why it didn't work out there? First of all, it was a, it was a great experience. I had the opportunity. I've talked about you know people that we've had the opportunity to work with, and um, I can name you know it was obviously a long list of people uh, within the organization. There, Hex was phenomenal, um, and and a ton of really good people to uh, to work with. Um, you know, as I as I look back at the experience uh, in Philadelphia, you know our challenge there was. Um, really transitioning a roster to, you know, not just a roster, but really the depth of the organization, uh, you know, to a, you know, to a younger group uh, that would be uh, sustainable over time from within the organization and, and be able to create long-term success. And, you know, we had a lot of successes uh, in some, in the areas that, that we were working at in terms of uh, the transition of younger players, not only into the, to the National Hockey League roster, uh, but also throughout the, uh, you know, throughout the organization. We were able to uh, maintain, you know, the opportunity to, to, to be a playoff team two out of the four years that I was there. And, you know, bluntly, when I look back at it, um, you know, I'll, I'll back up a year, 17-18, uh, uh, we had a stretch, you know, as we were injecting more and more youth into, into the team and partway through it. We had a stretch run, uh, I think it was in maybe November, uh, late November, uh, we went a stretch where it was difficult to win games, and it, and it gets tough in this league when you don't, you know, when you don't win games for a while. I think we went, you know, a stretch of uh, close to ten games, uh, where all we had was shootout losses and you know a few points to show for it. But you learn and you grow from it. And we had a great leadership group uh, with that group. Uh, we got that leadership group together uh, as we came on a western road swing, actually. Uh, and if I'm, if I'm remember this correctly, that was right at the beginning of December. Uh, that group believed in themselves, they believed in what they were doing, uh, and that rough patch turned out to be a great opportunity for development for our team. And I think that team from that point went forward uh, nearly a 700 clip to, to become a playoff team. Um, you know, so that was a challenging stretch uh, that turned out to be a great developmental opportunity for our team. Uh, the following year, you know, we came to that, we, we came to another difficult stretch. Um, and, uh, you know, there, there are foundational things that you have to be able to fall back on. And, and, you know, that's some of my takeaways as I look at that. We had a great opportunity for another great developmental step with an even younger team. Uh, and we weren't able to take advantage of that. So, you know, my takeaways are, you know, the, the details, the foundations. Uh, you can never take enough time and do enough work. Uh, on on those areas, so that as you hit a rough patch, you have you have those things to fall back on. Any final in-person questions before we open up the Zoom room, which I think Ben will facilitate that as well. All right, let's start things off here with Pierre LeBrun. A uh, question for both uh, Dave and Ron. Dave, any thoughts on uh, a timeline for filling out uh, the rest of your? the rest of your staff. And for Ron, um, could you share how many candidates through all this that you ended up interviewing? Hi, Pierre. Uh, yeah, I, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be able to give you an, you know, an absolute timeline. I can tell you we'll, we'll begin working on it immediately in terms of filling out the rest of the staff. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of communication between Ron and myself. Uh, and, uh, you know, at, at the, you know, I, I will say as soon as possible, uh, while getting it right for for our group, Pierre, we um, you know we started out the process with sort of putting a list together. We probably had, I would say, probably 50 to 100 names on the list, and then you kind of go through the process of sort of 
doing backgrounds and vetting out and, and making sure that it's someone you want to talk to. And I think at the end of the day, we actually interviewed uh, eight different uh, candidates for the position, some multiple times. Can we turn it up? Pierre's up. Pierre, you had a follow up there? No, I, I, I'm happy to share and let someone else ask a question. <laughs> now we'll go with Ryan Kennedy then. <laughs> Hi, a uh, question for Dave. When it comes to the on ice product, you know, I mean, every coach wants a team that works hard, but what are sort of the hallmarks of a Dave Hackstall team in your mind? Well, there, there's, uh, you know, there's some foundations uh, of, you know, of a team and of the game, uh, you know, that I, you know, certainly believe in, uh, and uh, these haven't changed a whole lot over time. Um, you know, when I when I look at good teams, I think, you know, it always you always start with character. Um, there's there's an aspect of uh, of ability, and there's different levels to ability. There's you know there's the obvious on ice skill portion that goes into that. Um, you know, I, I'm a guy that believes that work ethic is, is part of that ability piece. Uh, work ethic is a skill, so that's a piece of that. Um, you know, for me, resiliency, as you go through an 82-game schedule and, uh, you know, hopefully into a playoff run, resiliency is a huge part uh, of what our team will be about. Uh, there's, uh, it's not always easy, uh, and the teams that relish those tough days and want to come back and, and battle together, those are the teams that have success. Um, I've always, you know, I've always had humility as as part of the group. Uh, humility in the right sense, really, it allows you to respect this game, and and the game deserves a respect. It allows you to, you know, to respect the game and uh, just to kind of clear your plate and really go out and, and and compete. So, you know, those are all things that are important to me. Those are some of the things that, in different ways, I'll I'll talk about on different days. Uh, they're also, you know, those are some of the different elements that, that uh, lead us to the opportunity that we have here in terms of uh, building tradition and, and being able to add to that tradition, not only on a daily and a weekly basis, but a yearly basis. So, so those are some of the things that, uh, that are important to me. Let's go with Darren Brown. Hey, uh, Dave and Ron. So I'm curious, this whole process here, we've heard tons of rumors about who the coach would end up being and somehow we would never really heard Dave's name until this morning despite him coming from such a crazy hockey market in Toronto. How hard was it to, to keep Dave out of the rumors and what lengths did you go to to keep this thing under wraps until today? Um, actually, we didn't really do anything um, I would think extraordinary. We, we first talked with Dave last year. I mean, you know, it's an interesting process because sometimes you talk to teams and and, uh, you know, they request that you keep it quiet. I mean, at the time, Dave is employed by Toronto, so you certainly don't want that being out there and a distraction as he's, as he's uh, coaching, you know, with the Leafs. So, um, you know, on our end, we just had the conversations. We talked about things. And, and uh, you know, I think a lot of that credit goes to Dave. He just didn't talk about it to anybody. And when you don't do that, it doesn't get out there. So, um, you know, as I said, we had multiple conversations. And... Uh, it was able to be sort of kept in house and, until this morning. Erica Ayala. Thank you all, and uh, congratulations to you, Coach. Uh, this question will be for you, um, Erica Ayala, with Locked On Kraken Podcast. I wanted to ask you a little bit about your philosophy when it will come to building out your coaching staff. You've obviously been on coaching staffs. You've been a head coach before, but uh, given some of the things that you said you'd like to um, take from your last experience, I'm, I'm just curious how you hope to build out your staff. Will you be uh, kind of focused on what they can add um, to your growth and development or vice versa? I think there's different levels that uh, that come into play in filling out the staff. And uh, it's, a, it's a very important question. It's a very important process. Um, there's, you know, there's obviously the pieces of, uh, uh, you know, the, the detail of the game and the systems of the game, uh, you know, when it comes down to special teams, power play, penalty kill, uh, and, and different aspects in that nature. But there's also a side of, um, you know, of uh, helping us build the right culture. And uh, as a staff, uh, you know, that's going to be something that we talk about uh, on a daily basis. So. 
there's a lot more to it than just, uh, you know, the skill of, as I said, running a power play, running a penalty kill, uh, running the D, working with the forwards day in and day out. Um, you know, there's, there's, a, there's that human aspect. Uh, and we want to have a complete, very well-rounded staff in that regard, and that's something that we'll work hard to, as, as I answered before. Uh, we want to, you know, do it quickly, but more importantly, we want to make sure we, uh, we get it right. We have another one here from Pierre. A question for Ron. Um, you hear a lot about people who believe in the theory of the second-chance coach, that once a coach has a second tour of duty in the NHL, that you tend to get the best out of them. How much of that philosophy play a role in, in you, you know, ranking Dave highly in your thoughts? Yeah, no, I'd be lying if I didn't say we didn't consider it. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of examples of guys who have gotten that second chance and, and really taken advantage of it. Um, I think in our discussions uh, with Dave, you know, sort of walking through the process and, and what happened in Philly and his thoughts there and what he learned and, and then going to Toronto and his experiences there working under, you know, Mike Babcock and Sheldon Keith and what he learned there. I mean, you, you just get a sense that, uh, you know, he's ready for that second opportunity and, and um, you know, uh, it's something that certainly we factored into our final decision, but not the only things. But uh, I, I don't think that hurts to have that experience and now get a second chance as you've had an opportunity to learn a little bit more over the years. Take it back over to Everett. Okay, so a little bit of housekeeping. We've got one more thing after uh, after this, but uh, both, uh, or I guess all of uh, Todd, Dave, and Ron will be available for one-on-ones after uh, we're done here for about a half an hour. So Diera, Ben, and Katie Townsend will help to facilitate those. And before we get out of here, I believe Todd has one last so, message for us. Uh, one of the things we uh, were able to do last night is to meet your great family and uh, an incredibly fantastic wife, a great son who uh, volunteered to do the dishes last night. And that was super <laughs> impressive, but uh, missing is Avery. And uh, our young friend Jenna here, she's, uh, Jenna's uh, been involved in a number of announcements and she's played hockey here for a long time. We know your daughter loves the game and is playing it at a high level, and I think Jaina wanted to just uh, give her a Washington Wild a sweater and uh, so and welcome her to Seattle. So. Thank you, everyone, for attending today. As I said before, all three of these gentlemen will be available for one-on-ones for about a half an hour. Diera, Ben, and Katie over here will help facilitate those. Coach, welcome. Hackstall family, welcome. Thank you guys so much.